I'll speak to Peggy Grandy in America shortly about the literally terrifying prospect of Joe Biden running for a second term. I'll look at that shortly. But I continue to fail to understand why Donald Trump, who is gathering tremendous support within the Republican Party, notwithstanding relentless attacks upon him, I have difficulty understanding, and I've been around a bit, why a bloke who's achieved what he has achieved and without a script speaks the language of the everyday man and knows a heap. I can't understand why there isn't universal recognition that Trump is the hope of the Western world. When he was president, we didn't hear from Putin or Xi or the rocket man. Now they've run amok and we in the West are reduced to the status of just being bystanders. Now, in spite of these attacks, Donald Trump continues to loom large in America. To me, he's a breath of fresh air and more importantly, can afford to be politically brave. Thankfully, he's independently wealthy and therefore doesn't need to bow down to donors or puppet masters or anyone else. He just says it as he sees it. Two days ago, he addressed a rally in Manchester, New Hampshire. He was on fire. Admittedly, for a while, the Trump comeback looked shaky, especially with the mainstream media backing relentlessly Ron DeSantis. But ever since the disgraceful and hyper-partisan indictment of Trump by the George Soros-backed District Attorney of Manhattan, this fellow Bragg, the Trump 2024 campaign has gained massive momentum. Trump will be hard to beat in the Republican primaries. And then if he gets the Republican nomination for the presidency, Biden will surely, because he can't barely speak, Biden will surely be in trouble. But more of that shortly in relation to Biden. But the problem, as always, isn't the bumbling Biden. It's the people around him who are ideologically dangerous. Those who pull the strings of the Democratic Party are cunning. Now, this Trump, at this rally, Trump went hard on this nonsensical trend of allowing biological men to compete in women's sport. Now, as you know, they're physically stronger, biologically different. But everyone's supposed to be OK with them competing alongside women and entering their change rooms. Well, not only is it unfair, but it puts women at risk and it's unsafe. Well, Trump took a question from the crowd about how to ensure the protection of women. His reply was simple. I quote, vote for Trump. That's how you do it. He went on. It is the craziest thing. So many people hear it and they can't even believe the subject. He's right, isn't he? The next question was on the economy and it's collapsed under the Biden administration. His answer is one that I've been saying for years in relation to Australia's economy, and that is energy prices. Trump said, and I quote, when you reduce, you're listing Bowen and you nincompoops in Canberra. Trump said, when you reduce the price of energy, everything else will come down. He said, the way our country is going, we're going into a 1925 type depression. We're going to bring energy down, he said. We're going to get interest rates down. We're going to get back to a good life, unquote. Now, Trump's not stupid. He is a smart businessman turned politician. Asked about the radical left Democrats and their agenda to defund the police. Trump replied, never mind just defund them. The Democrats hate the police. Trump replied, you're talking to the right person. I gave billions and billions of ex-military equipment to the police. It was sitting in storage drawing dust. We're going to take care of our police. Our police can take control of our cities if you let them do their jobs, unquote. He went on, we can't let them be afraid that if they use one bad word, their life is ruined. These are great American patriots. They used to do a job, but now they're not allowed. We're going to help fund them, not defund them, unquote. How do you beat that answer? Asked by an audience member about election integrity, Trump interjected and said, you mean lack of integrity? But his answer began with saying, quote, we need to work out what happened in 2020. Many were saying to me, sir, put it in the background. No, he said, Trump said, you can't forget, because if you forget, they'll do it again. He said, we have to win and we have to win big. We have to swamp them. To be honest, he said, we did so well last time that I thought we swamped them then, but they used COVID to cheat, unquote. Trump's got guts. He then touched on something that I have talked about over and over again, and that is that elections should be on one day, not going on for weeks and weeks, all this postal and pre-polling stuff. Trump said at that rally, quote, we need same day voter ID, every vote cast. We should have same day voting, not voting lasting for 44 days. He said, people have to have confidence in elections. 
The problem is we've got a lot of people without courage, and that includes judges. He said they didn't have courage to do what should have been done, unquote. And then this, we have to win like never before. We have to watch those polling places. They're thugs in many cases, throwing our people out of the room. We have to have courage, and if we don't have courage, we won't have a country, unquote. I'm sorry, I can't complain with any of the above. What does this matter, though, for us, for Australian viewers? The final word to Trump, he said, other countries need a strong America, not just us. Isn't that true? We're tied at the hip with the United States of America, whether we like it or not. We've got the ANZUS Agreement. Now we've got AUKUS. Australia benefits from a strong America. It's unfashionable to say it, but in Trump, we have a strong leader in a world where leadership weakness has plunged the West into all sorts of trouble. 